All righty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and it's Friday. And I'm happy it's Friday. I'm hoping everybody gets to go home after Friday, uh, work on their projects, and do what they want to do, because doing what you want to do makes you the happiest. Uh, it's Friday, and we're going to be working on our project. But what I'm going to do today is, we have the car and primer. I'm going to show you how I take the pinholes out. Uh, the body work has been done. I do a, a 40, 40, 80 prime. That's what I do, a 40, 80 prime, if you can get it. What happens is, is I prime after the 80 grit, and you know just as well as I do, body fill gets pinholes in it, and um, you want to get rid of them before you paint, because the paint does not fill a pinhole. If you see a pinhole, if you see a scratch, if you see a mark, you see anything in your primer, you're basically going to magnify it with the paint. So what I'm going to do, or show you how I do it. Uh, basically, most people, most people do not 4080 prime it. And I'm going to explain to you why I 4080 prime it. Because 40 and 80, I find that I can get my fill straight. As soon as I start going up in grits to a 120 or 180 or 220 up in grits, I find things get wavy. And the reason being is it generally just polishes things instead of straightening things. I find the coarser the paper, the straighter you'll get it. So if, you have, if you're, you're working on your project and you're, and you're finding, wow, that's wavy. You know what? Get a sharper paper, an 80 grit or a 40 grit, go back to that sharper paper and run that over top of it and it will soon straighten it out, I guarantee it. But in the end, you're going to have pinholes. I have primed this car with a polyester primer, um, exact same polyester primer. It's really, it's basically the same thing as your, as your plastic body fill or your whatever. It's basically the same thing going on. It uses, it uses the, the exact same hardener as your fiberglass resin. This car has pinholes in it and I have primed it. Uh, most times when people do their body work they run over the glazing putty or the two-part putty and then they block that out with a finer paper so that means all the body work that I've done all on the roof all on the back anywhere I've done body work they have to cover it again and then block it out again so they're taking twice as long to do their body work yes they are because they are doing it again and again and again and again to cover it and smoothen it down so they can paint it. If you are a collision guy, I, I, I basically would agree with it because you want to paint it, you want to prime it, sand it, paint it. I understand that. I, because you want to get it out as quick as possible. I understand doing it that way. But where I'm restoring a car and doing the whole car all over the whole car, I feel that um, it's instead of me two part putting the whole thing trying to make all the body work perfect before I you know get to the primer I like to come if you want to come over here sweetheart I like to prime it remember this is 4080 if we take a look at this car if Jolene wants to come over and take a look at it we can see the pinholes and that's that's what I that's what I enjoy now we all know that I filled this whole, this whole, I guess we call it the catwalk, uh, the whole catwalk back here, I filled the whole thing. I did not two-part putty it. If I, if I was doing the two-part putty thing, I would cover the whole thing and do it all again. That, that takes a long time, you know, to do that. Where I 40 80 would it really quick with a DA and, and, a, and a block, um, it went really quick and then I got to prime it. If we want to come up here, you can see if jo uh, get Jolie, you can see the scratches in in the back here. You can see some 80 grit, 40 grit, or 80 grit scratches in the back of that. And you know what? That primer will take that out, no problem whatsoever. If you look down in here, you can actually see the feather grit, the the, the feather edger marks or the DA marks where it swirls around the circles a little bit, and that will disappear no problem with that primer. But where the, I've got the pinholes like this, and where I've got it primed. I can see, if you want to come up here, I can see exactly where the pinholes are. Exactly. There's pinholes there. There's a pinhole there. Pinhole there. And I will not, I will not two-part putty that from, from there over to there to get that little spot. I'm not going to do it. I, I'm going to use my the Z-grip, the filler, 
I'm going to fill each little pinhole like with a little bit. I like to put my body fill in the paint shaker before I use it. And the reason being is it shakes it up for you. If you hear the air compressor rocking and rolling, we'll walk it this way. If you hear the air compressor rocking and rolling, it's because Aiden's in the house. Aiden comes Fridays and Saturdays. And uh, guess what he's doing? He right into it. He's not even looking at us. <laughs> but he's painting the, the trailer. Uh, we sandblasted that the other day. Me and Doug got her sandblasted. And now Aiden's putting some paint on the underneath of it. And um, that's what we're going to do. Just trying to clean it up a little bit and go from there. So if you hear the sandblaster going, uh, it's just Aiden doing some painting. So I got the body fill in the paint shaker, just kind of shaking it up a little bit. We are painting the trailer with uh, Metal Pro. It's direct to metal. I've used to put a little thinner in it, thinned it down, and uh, he's painting. He's doing a fantastic job. I get to leave him alone, and I get to do my thing. While that's shaking, uh, <clears throat> while that's shaking, when I put the mounts in the front yesterday, I had a little bit of a time, you know, had a little bit of a time whether I got that in there right. And uh, there, I think there was a comment about measure from the firewall to the mount. Never even thought of it as I was doing it. I generally don't go to the tape measure, basically. And that's probably why I didn't go to the tape measure. But that was a great idea. That was a fantastic idea. And what he meant by was, I'm thinking what he meant by, is to measure from back to the firewall to the motor mount. From the firewall back to the motor mount. Sometimes when you're putting these engines in, sometimes the motor mounts are kind of caddy wonk, caddy corner, whatever, they're, they're not the same on both sides. But when I looked at the original cross member, they both, they were in line and they were exactly the same. So the mount, whether the mount's the same on both sides or not, do not know, but they're directly across from each other. I got that put in there, you seen us yesterday, we put the engine in there and it worked perfect. That, that's level, worked perfect. Let's pull, this bad, pull that bad boy out. So when I put that in there, he was saying that I could have measured, or whoever made the comment, I could have measured from the back of that to do that. And yes, I could have, and, and I did not. What I did is I used, if you remember right, I used this square stock, and I looked down in through the cross member, and I made it so it was the same distance all the way across with my eye. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna do the measurement that the guy suggested. That was a great idea. So from the firewall to the back of the motor mount, we got 16 and we'll say 5 eighths. You know, 16, 5 eighths. Let's come to the other side. You want to switch sides with me, sweetheart? She's going to have to do, or go underneath the motor mount, or motor picker there for a minute. She's going to go around the other side. What's it going to say? What's it going to say? What's it going to say? Sixteen and five eighths. <laughs> That's a good eye, folks. Um, basically, I eyed that up and it worked out perfect. Um, you can see that now that I've got the mounts welded in there, you can see what I did. I just kind of capped them all. And uh, well, you know, just made paper patterns and capped them so they look like something. Uh, they're they're a bit, can I say, they're a bit bulky, but they look they look good. They're in there. They're welded in there good. They're not going anywhere. The motor's going to cover them. Uh, the motor sit in there good. So I'm really happy with that. I am happy that they're not going to fall out. Very happy. So now the motor fits in. The transmission fits in. And uh, basically what I'm thinking now is I'm gonna, I want to move on to the firewall and do something with that. I want to uh, flatten that off. I do not want, I'm not going with the holes over here, not going with the holes here, not doing all that sort of stuff. I'm thinking I'm going to put a piece of metal in from this point to this point. Just not have figured out what I'm doing here because of the latch mount, because the hood comes down this way and latch is here. That's down beyond this lip. I'd like to go right from lip to lip and go all the way across, but this is kind of down in there, so I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do there. And when I do, I'll show you. Let's get our body fill. 
So a can of Z-Grip. I'm not sure what the price is. I'm not sure what the price is. I'm hoping that it's right here. That's not it. Feather fill gray, mini fiber. Which one? So. Yep. Body fill. See, it says body fill. So we're body fill. We're at $93. What did you charge me? $58 or $90? What, what? We get it for $58. Okay, so we got it for $58.44 for a gallon. Uh, when you go to buy the, the glazing putty, the two part putty, it was 82, I know it was $82 and 90 some cents. So I'm not sure how many would be in that because it was not a core, it was just a small can. So um, there's a big difference in price for the amount that you get. I'm just gonna move that over here. Got sort of a little mess going on. Get a screwdriver and open that bad boy up. So that's, I guess that's why I, uh, I'm sticking to uh, the body fill because it'll get me the same as the glazing putty for four times the money. It's almost time for a new mixing board. squeegee. I want a small squeegee. Just need a small one. We're going to do some pinholes and I'm going to use the filler. I'm not going to mix up a whole bunch and the reason being is because I'll probably go hard before I get all the pinholes. So put a little bit of hardener in this. Probably too much. So count up the time. You have to figure it out in your own brain. I've already got it figured out. But count the time of glaze, putting, all the body work that was done on the car. You have to figure that out. So all the, you have to, like what I did there, you'd have to do it again. And when you get that glaze and putty going, then you break through it and then you get into your body fill. Then you got things that are different uh, hardness and different uh, textures. And then it gets wavy on you because you're using a really uh, fine, uh, paper because you you, you want to prime it with no pinholes in it. I just find it's a it's a daunting process is to glaze putty body fill. I find it very daunting. Where I've got that like that, see the little pinholes. Just gonna press that in there. And a lot of people say you can use a razor blade, and you very well can. You very well can. Just want them scratches out of there, but. I find that the, the razor blade, the edges of the razor blade stick into your primer. Places right here. This seems to me like a better process than glazing the whole thing. Basically, got a few pinholes here. Putting it on as thin as possible. When you get chunks in your body fill, I guess it's time to change the board. <laughs> time to change the board. I also find when I sand this filler that I'm putting on the primer that I'm going over top of this feather fill that I'm going over top of I find that it allows me to sand the body fill first 
And what I mean by sand the body fill first is that the, bo or the body fill is not as hard as the primer is. So uh, the sandpaper works on the body fill first and that way there I'm not into um, making things wavy again. I'm just sanding the, fill, the, the body fill um, and that's all I want to sand is the body fill. I don't want to sand through the primer to get where I'm going. Just rubbing it in with my finger. Do not want to waste my product. So basically I'm just going to do that process again. We'll do a couple more times and that will happen is the body fill will dry and then I'll show you how I'm going to get that off or how I'm going to take that off. The car will have to be, or it doesn't have to be, but I'm going to prime the car again because I'm going to block it out and try to make it as straight as possible. There are the, the, the hinges that we epoxied and just painted. They look fantastic. Um, they're just epoxied and painted. We didn't sand the primer. We didn't anything. We just epoxied them and painted. That's what I use that for. This process is not for everybody. But this process, what I'm doing here right now, sure can help you out if you have issues with making uh, body work straight and to be a little bit quicker. And the reason you're quicker is because I'm not covering the whole car with the two-part putty. And it cuts down on the price. And, all this, and if anybody uses the, the two-part putty or, or has used the two-part putty, it becomes that situation where your body feels not straight. And then you, then you, then you load on the two-part putty and say, oh, I'll straighten it out with the two-part putty. I'll put on a coat of two-part putty and then I'll straighten it out with that. Then it becomes into that situation. Then you become into, it just, it just gets into a bigger mess as you get going along. You just use more of it and more of it and more of it. It's a little scratch, a little dig right there. That's what I find. If you hear the air compressor, it's because Aiden is painting. With this stuff, I'm just trying to do the pinholes, and that's it. That's all I want is the pinholes. I don't want to straighten anything. I think, I think it's as straight as it can be. To be honest with you, or not straight, it is, it's as straight as it can be, because I've used a 40 and 80, I have not made it crooked whatsoever, it's very straight. So I'm not using any putty, you can see scratches in there, you see the scratches, that primer will take that. What I want to do is just get some pinholes, pinholes, see the pinholes there? So you can see, little tiny pinholes. You can see how fine that is. See how the pinholes are filled with body fill? And when I sand that, you can, you'll even see that the pinholes Not trying to straighten anything, just trying to fill pinholes. Not trying to straighten anything.
How you making out, Aiden? Gigi sounds happy, doesn't he? Fina just woke up. What's that? Having a blast? Awesome. It's always good when someone has a blast doing something you want them to do. <laughs> it's always good. You gonna, just looking it over here for a second. There wasn't much body, didn't do any body work on the doors, but then again, um, it does not matter whether there's pinholes in it or not. I'm gonna do a few more pinholes and then we'll go for uh, sand it off and show you how I'm gonna do it. Sometimes just the way to learn how to do something, just do it. Going to the other side, going to the other side. We have the hood upside down ready for primer and the trunk ready for primer. We had that ready for primer for a bit now. But uh, Aiden is doing his thing, and um, we're going to let him do, do his thing because his is more important right now. We want to get that done. Just pressing into pinholes. Just as less I can get it. Like this is ever so thin. Not looking to straighten anything out, just love looking to put some <laughs> body fill in a pinhole. That's all I'm doing. <sighs> and we've got a few of them. And that's why people glaze putty their whole, if they body fill this, they glaze putty the whole thing because you would have pinholes all over your filler. Why? Why? I'm gonna change that board. Why? What I'm getting is little heart part particles in my. in my filler, which is not making me happy. Time to change the board. You can put it on with your finger, put it on any way you want to. Any way you want to. Put on the razor blade, like some people said. It's fine. Just find the ra razor blade ends are so sharp, that's all. So, it looks like a peppered up, peppered up thing. If I try to pinhole, if I try to pinhole before I put the primer on, then what happens is, is that I'm digging in, I'm digging into the body fill that's around the surrounding area. Where I have it primed, I'm not digging into the body fill that's around the surrounding area. I'm actually sanding the primer that's around the surrounding area. But I'm going to be blocking the primer out, so it's not a big, it's not a big deal. Let's take and dry yet. Almost, it's almost dry. Almost dry. I have a 80 grit on that. 
Um, this car, I'm not sanding it down. I'm not, I'm not priming, I'm not painting this primer. What I'm doing is I'm de-pinholing it and blocking it out. I probably will prime, I probably will prime it again. It only had uh, one prime, so I'll probably prime it again. I'm not looking to uh, prime it once and just paint it. Generally, it's not the way I do things. Uh, I probably will prime it again, but I'm just gonna take a little bit wet. You can do it with a 220, no doubt in my mind. There's not very much body fill on there whatsoever. I just tried to put enough on for pinholes. That's just a used piece of paper, so it's not real sharp. Body fill should probably dry it a little bit longer. It probably should have. But we'll do this one area. When you're blocking something like that, you should crisscross it and go all over. You can see how where I'm blocking it, you can see where the scratches are, where the 80 grit or the 40 grit, 80, 80 grit, I went over this, 80 grit, you can see where there's some still some scratch marks in it. I'm using the product, the primer, to um, cover or to take that. I am, that's what it's for. That's what we use primer for. Here a little bit. You can do this with a 220 if you want to, but what happens is I'm going to take the and guide coat the car after I take all the pinholes out. I, I, I'm not looking to straighten anything out. I'm just looking to take the pinholes out. So I'll just go over real quick with a piece of 80, probably take out, knock the body filler off, all these little places, knock them off with an 80 rig, go real light, real easy. I'm not not trying to straighten the car out or anything. I'm just trying to take the pinholes, get rid of those. So. As you can see, we're almost through here. I knock all these off really quick, I can. Uh, you know, if I take, you know, just go careful. Now let's look it over. Now you can see pinhole, 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 all pinholes, all the pinholes covered up with the filler. Got one going on there. Did I miss one? I might have missed one. But you can see how that filler, see the pinhole, pinhole, pinhole. I did not disturb the body fill underneath it so the, the, it's still straight. Like there's just, just primer on top of there. You can see where, um, where here where it's not sanded, where I've been using the block. So that tells me I gotta take that primer down to get that. But I'm not going to do that yet because I'm just deep hip, just pinhole right now. So what I'd leave that like that. I go on to my next one. Do my next one. Knock it off real quick. And you can do it with 220 or whatever you want to do it with you, whatever paper you want. But I just find the 80 grit knocks off the the body fill just maybe a little bit faster. When I get that off, then I will put my guide coat over top of this. So I still have my primer that I can work to block it all off. Basically, I've just knocked off some, some body fill and took out the pinholes. So now when I get it to this stage, I'm not going through the primer or anything, not trying to take out the scratches or anything, trying to leave as much body or primer on there as possible, but I'm just trying to get them pinholes. So as I do that, 
I leave that alone. I'm not, I'm not gonna block that down and try to get the scratches out of it, no way. What I'm looking for is, is to just, like I said, to get the pinholes out, and then I can come back and guide coat that. And where I've hit it with, a two, with an 80 grit, the 220 will really work a lot faster. Like there'll be, there will be, it'll work a lot faster. Holding the block flat, going many different ways. Now you can see I got the pinholes. I still have scratches. Yes, I do. Still have scratches. Yes, I do, because I only went 48, er, 40, 80. So now when I get this, when I've got no pinholes, now when I get it like this, then I can come in with the guide coat and guy coat the whole thing. Guy coat is the black paint, or you can use like a, what's that called, a powder coat? You can use the powder guy coat, or you can spray bomb coat it. You can do anything you want to, but now that I have all the pinholes out of it, now I'm allowed to guy coat it and block it up with a 220, and then I'm, then I'm moving right on. I'm not blocking all, I'm not covering that all and blocking that all out. That takes, takes hours to just go across that. And, and I'm going to be able to do it within, you know, half hour. I'll be able to do all that, no problem whatsoever. Like that, that was kind of wet. The filler was kind of wet still because it didn't sand that good. But in a half hour, I could buff all them little pinholes off in a half hour. Did not have to try to straighten anything out. Did not coat it all again. Did not anything. And and then you guide coat it, and then you go on from there. I hope I explained that right. But you do it the way you want to do it. And then I suggest you always do it the way you want to do it, because that way there you'll be the happiest. You will, you will, you will. And then basically that's about the end of it. I'm going to get a little piece of paper and just do buff this off. See the pinholes. I'm not breaking into my body fill. I'm not. I'm not um, wasting my primer as filler. Like you know, we're putting the primer on to. Uh, fill scratches and get it ready and smooth it off for paint. That's what we're doing. You can see, see my pinhole, pinhole there, pinhole there, pinhole there. Just cover it off, leave it like that. Nothing to it. There's a big difference if you if you sand it two part putty. And if you haven't, uh, to do all that and, do, and then just do what I'm doing. Big difference. Pinhole. All right, just taking that off really quick. As that's like that, we'll just show something simple real quick. We'll just do this. I don't know if I gotta. Hmm. Something that dries quick would be nice. What? That's fine. We'll just do this. Get a little primer. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit to show the process. Where I have it like this, you see all the scratches still in it. You see all the pinholes in it. Just go around and do that. Do not go through your primer. Do not do any of that. Yeah. Just got a little primer here. I'm just going to block it and show it. So this is what I mean by guy coat. So after I get all that taken off, we guide coat the car like this. If I got a piece of 220 or not, hoping I do. Got a piece of
Got a piece of 220 here, I'll just stick on that. Hit my head on that, wouldn't I? That would hurt, wouldn't it? A pair of scissors, I don't know where I put those. What's that? So as I've taken that off, generally know how I cut paper. Now your guide coat is probably wet, probably making this very quick, but probably a little quick, but I'll show you the process. Now I'm into sanding the primer uh, to making it all where it needs to be. Now I got the guide coat on there. Now I can do the rest of the rest of the deal. And that's get rid of the scratches and, and, and that stuff that's around the pinholes. See where this here the pinholes were now I'm on to 220 there and I haven't got any no scratches no pinholes no nothing so that's how that's how I do it but that's a that's a quick version I got scratches over here they're not really pinholes or scratches so I'm gonna I'm gonna use that primer uh, to buff that off and that's what I'm hoping that's a 4080 4080 is the primer is, is the grit that I used so I use the primer to take out the rest of it. So I use the filler to do the pinholes really quick. And then I use the primer to take the scratches. And I just gotta carry on and take that stuff out with the primer. That's basically what I'm doing. So it looks like this. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Take what you like. Throw away what you don't like. Um, basically, that's how, I, how I'm going to de-pinhole the whole car. Uh, and I'm not going to use the two-part putty. It's 40, 80, prime. Fill the pinhole knock it off with whatever 220 or an 80 does not matter to me guide coat the whole car after you took all the pinholes out of it 220 guide coat 400 you can paint it with a single stage at 400 if you want to go to a base clear well, then you just keep going up in sandpaper that's basically it anything that you see in the car that has a scratch if you see this in your car before you paint if you see that in your car before you paint you're going to you're going to see it in the paint so that has to be gone and that's why i guy coax that stuff is not allowed we want it to look like this we want it to look smooth and you can see where the the filler is in the pinholes you can see that so there you go and that's what i've done today to call it a good friday all right everybody thanks for coming back um we appreciate it like subscribe comment come back we'll be here tomorrow Aiden's still painting like a trooper awesome got a little suit on he does and everything huh all right everybody have a great day and see you tomorrow